My dad's fiancée tried to ruin my life and steal his money, but I exposed her cheating, and now she's out for good. When my dad first told me that he had met someone new, I was happy for him. I knew that my dad was lonely, but as time went on, it began to be pretty obvious that his new girl wasn't exactly the best person in the world, especially when it comes to treating me. Let's just call her Karen in this post, and from the moment I met her, I could tell that she was not a fan of mine. She would give me icy glares whenever I was around, and she would always find ways to criticize me. At first I tried to brush it off and be polite, but it became clear that she had some personal agenda against me. Let me tell you guys about a few things she has done. One day I came home from school to find out that an expensive eyeshadow palette was missing from my dressing table. I had saved up for months to buy that, and I was sure that I had kept it in the drawer. I went to Karen to ask if she had taken it, and she said she hadn't. Later when she had gone out I went to her room and there it was, my palette. I confronted her, and she claimed it was hers and accused me of making false allegations against her and told me I must have misplaced it. I was shocked and upset, but I tried to keep my cool. I moved my things back to my room, and I hoped that it was just a one-time thing, but it wasn't. Karen started to find more and more ways to make my life difficult. She would leave notes on my door telling me to clean up my room, even though it was already clean. She would make snide comments about my grades or my appearance. And worst of all, she started to try to turn my dad against me by telling him that I was mean to her when he was not around, and when it was the opposite. One day when I was doing my homework after school I got a text from a friend. My friend works at this luxury brand outlet in a mall pretty close to my house. I checked my phone, and it was a photo of Karen with a random guy. My friend asked if that was my dad's girlfriend and I said yeah. She said they had been in the store for a while and bought a lot of stuff for the guy, and Karen paid for it with her card. She made a big fuss about spoiling him and everything. This was weird for a lot of reasons. I mean, for starters, who even was this guy? Was she cheating on my dad? Also, Karen can't afford luxury items with her own money. When my dad met her, she was working as a secretary, but she quit the job when she moved into our place months ago. How was she even buying that stuff? I was confused and decided to tell my dad, but it was hard to catch him alone in the house. Karen mostly went out when dad was out and at work and was almost always back by the time he made it home. I knew if I told dad while she was in the house, she'd probably try to manipulate him and make up lies about me hating her and creating lies. I kept waiting for the perfect time. Meanwhile, Karen continued making me as miserable as ever. Times like dinner when we were all together, she often talked about how I should move out now that I'm 18, and I overheard her talking to dad multiple times about how he should force me to get a job and provide for myself to teach me responsibility. I ignored everything and kept waiting for the right time, but I knew I had to take an immediate step when one day dad announced that they were engaged. The next day she came to my room and told me my days in the house were numbered because now that they were going to be married and have kids of their own, I'd be kicked out. I had had enough. I decided to play along. That night at dinner I told dad that I had found a job and was going to move out. I asked him if he would go out for lunch the next day, just the two of us to celebrate. The funny thing is, Karen herself encouraged dad to go with me and take some extra time off from work, lol. If only she knew what was coming. The next day at lunch I told dad everything. I told him all about all the horrible stuff Karen says to me, showed him the picture of her with the other guy, and told him about the purchases. I feel so bad for my dad, because he genuinely looked heartbroken. But he needed to know. He told me that Karen uses his credit card for all her purchases, and he would look into it. He told me to act like everything was normal at home until he figured out what was happening. We came home and both of us acted like it was a regular lunch. Nothing happened for the next two days and I spent my time in anticipation of the storm that was about to come. Two days later dad came home early from work and asked both me and Karen to come to the living room because he had something important to talk about. Karen probably thought I was about to be kicked out, but I knew exactly what was coming. We sat down and waited for dad to say something. He started by asking Karen if she had been using his credit card recently because he has been seeing some strange purchases. I could immediately see her expression change. She asked what he meant and he asked her where she was last Friday. That was the day my friend saw her in the store. She said she didn't remember. My dad then asked why there was a $1,500 charge from that day. She said she must have bought something but didn't remember what. Dad asked what she could have possibly bought from a menswear store, and that's when she started grasping at straws for any possible excuse under the sun. I wish I could write about the whole conversation, but it's way too much to type out. Long story short, my dad had spent the last two days tracking every unusual expense and called her out on each one. The icing on the cake was the photo I had of her with that man. Karen had been stealing from him and spending the money on another guy. He showed me the evidence that he had found and it was clear that Karen had been lying to him about her expenses. 
My dad was furious and he immediately broke off the engagement. He told Karen that he never wanted to see her again and that he would be pressing charges for theft. Karen was caught off guard and she tried to deny everything, but my dad was firm and he told her that she had to leave the house immediately. She packed her things and left without saying a word. I was relieved that Karen was gone, but I also felt guilty. If I had spoken up sooner, maybe my dad wouldn't have had to go through all of this. I knew that I had to apologize to him and make things right. I sat down with my dad and told him everything. He listened to everything and apologized to me for not intervening earlier when she was treating me poorly. My dad and I have always been close, but this experience brought us even closer together. We talked about how we could move forward and make sure that something like this never happened again. Update 1. It has been a week since Karen was kicked out and I think that we have finally gotten rid of her. My dad and I haven't talked about her at all. We haven't been talking a lot. I feel bad for him, poor guy. I mean, obviously I never liked Karen and she's a terrible person, but I think my dad loved her, so he's pretty heartbroken. I don't know what to do and how to help him, but I'm hoping time will make things better for him. I'm not thinking of actually moving out. That was just something I made up so I could talk to dad alone. Thanks for all the support you guys have shown to my original post. Seeing everyone agreed to Karen being an evil gold digger has given me more satisfaction than I could have expected. Maybe after my dad has had more time to get over this, I can show him this post and we can laugh over this. Update 2. Karen has made a reappearance. Honestly, I should have known that a parasitic leech like her wouldn't let go of someone like my dad so easily. So dad and I were home having dinner when someone rang the doorbell and he went out to get it. I could immediately hear Karen's voice and almost ran to the door. I could see her crying and knew that she was there to somehow manipulate and cry her way into our lives again. I didn't understand what was happening at first, and then Dad told me to go to my room. I tried to convince him to let me stay, but he was pretty firm about it so I had to go. An hour later he came to my room and told me that Karen had told him she was pregnant and had no place to go. Dad straight away told her that he would require a paternity test before even thinking of letting her back into his life, and that made her upset. I asked him if the baby was his, would Karen move back in, and he said no. So the way things stand now, Dad is going to get a paternity test. And if the baby is actually his, he will pay child support and nothing else. I just feel bad for my dad for getting involved with someone like her in the first place. Update 3. The paternity test came back negative. Goodbye forever Karen. She tried to beg his forgiveness and all but dad tried to threaten her with the police and she finally backed off. I'm so glad this nightmare is over. I hate these types of women with all my soul. She took advantage of your father's kindness and tried to take advantage of you just because you're young. I'm so glad she has finally been shown her place and I hope you guys never have to deal with her again. What a manipulative, selfish person. She was cheating on your dad with another man, got knocked up by that other man, spend your dad's money on that guy and had the audacity to come back for forgiveness. Disgusting. Next story. I'm currently on holiday with a friend who likes to sleep in late, like until noon or 1 p.m. In contrast, I'm a very early morning person. Normally when we travel together this isn't a big deal as we've always stayed in hotels in separate rooms so I've just done my own thing in the morning and we've met up at lunchtime. This time we're staying in an Airbnb and they've only left us one set of keys and they don't have another. I've checked and the front door of the flat will only close from the outside with a key. There's no handle. You have to put the key in the lock and pull it closed. This means that if I want to go out in the morning I have to take the only set of keys with me and essentially lock my friend in. She can get out in an emergency but she can't close the door behind her, if you see what I mean. My friend's not happy about this because yesterday I was out until noon. She got up at 10 and was sitting around bored, unable to go anywhere until I got back. I did head back to the flat when she messaged me that she was up, but I was on the other side of the city at a museum so it took me a couple of hours. I did tell her the night before that I was going out and she said she didn't mind but I think waiting around being bored annoyed her a bit. As a compromise I said that maybe she could get up earlier. About 8 9 am ish so let me out of the flat and then go back to bed. That way she's got the keys if she wants to go out before I get back at lunchtime. She's not happy about this as she hates being woken up and she thinks I should just hang around the flat until she gets up and she'll try to get up earlier. So far on this trip she's been getting up at noon. Am I being unreasonable to say that I'm not going to sit around all morning waiting and that if she doesn't want me to wake her up to let me out then it's kind of fair that I take the out in the morning. Update. Thanks for your suggestions guys. I contacted the host again and asked if he'd mind us having a key cut. I honestly didn't even think of this. I suppose because it's someone else's place. He said he was fine with it, so we're about to go and find the cobbler or locksmith or someone who cuts keys in Brussels and chill for the rest of our time here. I would have gone with Na until she started demanding that you sit bored with nothing to do waiting for her to get up. This is an agonizing way to spend a morning. 
I remember doing it on a few vacations with my family. You, NTA, hopefully you can find a compromise you both can live with and get back to enjoying your vacation. Another commenter proposed the two valid options. She gets up for five minutes when you're leaving to let you out and gets the keys. You get a fixed gathering time that you will be back with the keys to either be let out by her or to depart together. Again, should have a fixed period of time where you have to be there if she decides to go back to bed or not get up. NTA, personally, I think the compromise should be okay. It's sad she doesn't want to work around the issue at all. It's just her way or her way. It would suck to waste that much holiday time for active people. What about locking her in thing and she messages when she's up but you stick closer to the place and leave the faraway museums for later in the day? NTA. I sleep until noon all the time but it isn't difficult to get up a little earlier. She's being unreasonable whereas you've just tried to make it fair for the both of you. Neither of you should have to sit around waiting and your compromise was a pretty good idea, especially since she can just go back to bed if she wants. Maybe just see if you can figure out a time for both of you to get up, set an alarm or something. Hopefully she can get over herself so that both of you can enjoy your vacation. Next story. I, 19, female, am getting married to my fiancé, M, 19, female, in October of this year. I'm wearing a black dress and my fiancé is wearing a burgundy and black suit. I have a cousin, 24, female, named K. K has never liked me throughout my entire life. She's my mom's sister's child and before I was born she was the youngest grandchild. After I was born the attention was shifted from her to me, and now I was the one being spoiled by grandparents instead of her. In the wedding information I sent out to guests I requested that guests not to wear the colors black or burgundy as I wanted to keep them reserved for the wedding party. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, I was talking to my aunt about the dress I chose and sent her a few pictures of the dress once it arrived. Later that day her and my mom were chatting on the phone about what my cousin was going to wear, and that's when my aunt mentioned that my cousin just bought an all-black dress. I was in the room when this happened so I heard everything that was being said. My mom mentioned what I told every guest about not wanting anyone to wear that color but my aunt just laughed and brushed her off saying it's not a big deal, and it's not like Kay is going to upstage me just by wearing the simple color. I texted Kay telling her about how I heard that she got a black dress and requested that she return as she knew that I was wearing a black dress and requested that no one should wear that color. Apparently Kay told my aunt about what I sent her and she started berating me and my mom telling my mom she had no right to share what was said in their private conversation and that I need to get over myself that it's just a dress and it's just a wedding day that if I don't like it then I shouldn't have picked that color for my dress. Kay texted me back telling me that I'm going to have to get used to not getting what I want in life and that I'm just a spoiled brat for requesting this of her when it's just a color. This is where I may be the a-hole. I told Kay that if she shows up in the black dress I'll have my dad and my fiancé's dad to kick her out and she won't be allowed to attend my wedding. Since then I've been receiving messages from Kay and my aunt telling me how selfish and spoiled I am for making this my hill to die on. So Reddit Ada edit. It's traditional for the bride to wear a black dress in my culture. I included it on my invitations as my fiancé's family is not a part of my culture. Edit. Since so many people are calling me the awe ah because of this I'd like to add that black is the traditional color for a wedding gown in my family's culture. It was put on the invite as my fiancé's family are not part of the same culture. Red is traditional for my fiancé's family's culture, but we aren't fans of bright red so we switched it to wine red or burgundy. Edit 2. I have officially uninvited my cousin and aunt from the wedding. My tipping point? I just found out from a different family member that she bought her girlfriend a burgundy jumpsuit to wear too and my aunt is condoning her behavior. NTA, you were nicer than I would have been. I would have just uninvited her. The bridal party requesting that guests not wear particular colors is not at all unreasonable. If you were wearing a traditional white wedding gown anyone showing up in a white dress would be appropriately treated with disdain for such a lapse in manners. More to the point, it's obvious that she's doing this despite you and is being petty. I would just straight out uninvite her after that rude text she sent. The only guests at a wedding are those who support and love the bride and groom. Someone who has indicated so much disdain for you has no business at your wedding at all, even if she ultimately decided not to wear a black dress. And if she does come, I certainly wouldn't open any gifts from her. NTA, you have requested explicitly that your guests not wear these two colors. It's no stranger than a guest not wearing white at the average wedding which most people accept as being respectful and polite. You just happen to have a different color requirement than white. I hope you stand your ground. NTA, you made it extremely clear that you didn't want anyone else wearing these colors. She most likely did this on purpose. Her mother gaslighting is also really disgusting. It's just a wedding day. How invalidating. It is supposed to be one of the happiest days of your life. I hope she shows up in that dress and gets kicked out to be honest. Next story Ada for telling my mom she's punishing me and my brother more than our grandparents and extended family.
My mom had this big, huge, even, fight with my dad's side grandparents a few months ago. She decided she doesn't want to have anything to do with them going forward and she has decided to punish them by keeping me 17F and my brother 14M from them. She can't stop me for long because I'll be 18 in a few months, but my brother's only 14. She already took our phones and deleted their contacts on our phones, so she means serious business, some BG context for this stuff before I go into what I said. My dad died when I was 7 and my brother was 4. It was a work-related accident and mom got money because of it. She had my grandparents help her set up some accounts for our future with the money. Nobody can touch those except for me and my brother when we each turn 18. So we stayed close to our dad's side after this and mom got married again when I was 10. She had a baby a few weeks after the wedding. Mom and dad's side had discussed things going forward. They agreed to include mom's husband and any half-siblings we'd have. But they said it wouldn't be the same and they'd still want time with just me and my brother without our half-siblings. My mom agreed. And so we'd all see them and spend time with them. My half-siblings were never treated like grandkids or anything by dad's side but more like family friends. My mom and her husband got the wrong idea over time though that my dad's side had grown to love and consider our half-siblings their family grandkids. So a while back, my brother and I had gone to stay at dad's best friend's house with his family and my mom and her husband wanted a night off. Mom called my grandparents and asked if they wanted a grandkid sleepover. My grandparents were like of course. But then it became clear that it was our half-siblings and not me and my brother. It pissed mom off that they weren't as excited, and when my grandparents asked how long my half-siblings would be there, my mom ended up getting really angry about it. When we got home she was already so pissed. It only got worse when she learned my grandparents had money saved for me and my brother like their other grandkids but not my half-siblings. This is what led to, well this shit. My brother and I haven't been allowed to see them and we missed them like crazy. Mom told us we shouldn't stand for their favoritism and she told us we should stand by our half-siblings. She gets annoyed whenever we talk about missing our dad's side. And she told my brother it was really sad to her that he wasn't more angry on their behalf, and that he'd miss people like that. I didn't like her trying to shame him for it and I told her she's punishing us me and my brother more than dad's side with this. I told her we lost our dad and now she wants us to lose his family. And I told her she got married again but her husband isn't our dad and doesn't make up for dad. Mom told me I didn't need to make it so clear whose side I'm on and then she said I picked the wrong side. 